Good morning, everyone. Bill and Carrie with KB Tricks. Good morning. Where are we at? How, what are we doing? We are in St. Paul, Minnesota. We are about ready to check out the Minnesota History Center. Yeah, as we walk in, uh, over here is the box office where we pay. There's also a museum store and a second museum store. Uh, there's an auditorium to go to, but we have to go up to the third floor for the exhibits. Right now, the rotating exhibit is a Sherlock Holmes exhibit uh, where they're going to have a bunch of artifacts for Sherlock Holmes. We'll go stick our head in there at some point. As we're walking in from the lobby uh, to go see the Sherlock Holmes exhibit, um, one of the things that you see here on the main level is this vehicle. This was actually used in the second Sherlock Holmes movie starring Robert Downey Jr., uh, Sherlock Holmes Game of Shadows. So they actually made this for the movie to make it look like it came out of that time period and they had no use for it after the movie, so they donated it to the exhibit. But uh, Robert Downey Jr. drove this in the movie. We just walked up one level. We are on the second floor. There's no exhibits on this floor. However, the library the, is. The library is. And so what the library is, this is family library. If you're interested in doing any family research, genealogy, whatever, you want to look up the history for your family, here's where you can go and you can access to see if there's family record. Um, and you have to make provisions or whatever, but uh, this is where you can go for that. Still on the second floor, but down this hallway is educational classrooms. So if your school did a field trip type thing, you can go into one of these rooms and have somebody talk or whatever. We're gonna go up the third floor where the exhibits are. Now we're up on the third floor, um, down this hallway over here is the special exhibit. So that's where it's a rotating type thing. Right now it's Sherlock. Um, and then there's another exhibit over here called Then and Now right now. But this is kind of interesting. When they designed this building, they intentionally put it here like this. So if you look through the window, you can see the Capitol building. And in fact, if you're in the Capitol building and you look closely, you can see through that window and see 180 degrees from where I'm standing. And so in theory, if you have a good enough vision, you can see the plane here through the History Center from the Capitol. All right, so here's the Sherlock Holmes exhibit. Uh, we're going to go in and we're going to learn all about not just Sherlock Holmes, but the writer who may invented him. We just got out of the, uh, the Sherlock, the Sherlock Holmes traveling exhibit. Uh, if you want to watch that, we're going to have a link up here uh, that you click on for more specific that. But we're going to go check out the rest of uh, the History, History Center. Museum. Wow, it has gotten a little bit foggy outside. Uh, it's still a great view of the capital. Well, we're going to head into next year, Rohan? Our home, Native Minnesota. Okay, so this is a Native American uh, exhibit. So in this room, it's uh, interesting. You can learn about the different uh, Native American groups around Minnesota, uh, Dakota Territory, Ojibwe. Well, here are some uh, things like this is a rifle cover and some uh, moccasin. Uh, uppers, what they're called. This area you can learn a bit about the uh, Ojibwe and uh, the way how they traveled across the country. Over here they're talking about wild rice and how they collect it. And let's go check out the then, now, and wow exhibit which is across from the uh, traveling special exhibits. As we walk in, one of the th first things we see is some uh, uh, Native American uh, uh, outfits and a dowel and a really, really big canoe. I don't think I've ever seen a canoe this size before. Over here is the uh, Snake River fur post, kind of the way how uh, I might look inside of 1804, so over 200 years ago, or some of the things that you would find. That's some of the stuff you might find in a fur post, things like uh, cooking or tools like axes, snowshoes, and of course uh, pelts, furs, clothing, things like that, materials. This kind of looks familiar. Uh, what is this supposed to be from? Um, this is the sign that is at Itasca State Park, uh, yeah, which is where the Mississippi starts. Uh, we actually did a vlog where we went up to the Itaca State Park and we saw the headwaters in Mississippi. We'll put a link up in the corner. Go check that out. As we walk in, there's a kind of early uh, ages of uh, Minnesota when uh, settlers were coming to town. 
it's a town to this before it was a state coming to Minnesota. Uh, of course, Native Americans were here long before settlers. And here we're talking about uh, Dakota homeland and the prairies. So I had uh, the bison, uh, which was a food source and clothing source, and the hides. So if I understand this right, this is supposed to be this area of Minnesota, the prairie. Uh, so that region of the state. This is a uh, pioneer home made from uh, earth. Uh, this is supposed to be, you know, based on time period around 1874. Poker head in here, see what uh, you would find in one of these homes. Kind of like a single room with a bed, small stove. What's this on? It's this. Yeah. It's like their refrigerator. Okay. It really isn't a refrigerator, but this is where they kept their fruits and veggies. Okay. Little cabinet. This room is kind of like a play area. Uh, looks like it's looks like a grain silo, something like that. They can explore. Ah, okay. This is called Grainland. All right. They can go and explore through this play area and learn a little bit about grains in Minnesota and other crops like soybeans, corn. And this is a train car and these things are uh, a lot bigger in person than what that you think when you come across them on the, uh, you know, driving down the side of the road. A lot of uh, interesting stuff in here. Where they talk about the history of the Vikings here in Minnesota, not just uh, as the football team, but how Vikings are tied. There were actual Vikings, real Vikings, are tied to Minnesota. Uh, for example, this is supposed to be the Rune Stone, uh, which is supposed to show uh, the Vikings had been in Minnesota for centuries. This is a replica of a streetcar. Streetcar used to be all around the Twin Cities and um, what's still the metro now but was more outskirts um, than a place like Duluth and Rochester. We actually rode a uh, streetcar in Excelsior for our vlog a while back, put a link up there, but just telling a little bit about the history of streetcars for Minnesota. And this arrow here talks about the 35W bridge collapse from 2007 and uh, there's a photo of the bridge after collapse and uh, the school bus this is the uh, exit hatch for that school bus that you can see in the photo there that was on the bridge that day. Hi, right, what do you think of this uh, exhibit? It's very neat. Yeah. I'm ready to go work in a mine. How about you? Oh, I haven't even seen the mine stuff yet. Yeah, we have to go. We have to go. Okay, here's a uh, iron mine. So this is the uh, northeast corner of the state. Okay, so like in there is like a mine shaft. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna just kind of walk through here, kind of see about ore processing. Oh, this is a drill for mining. How deep are we supposed to go? Oh, can't stop right in the right spot. Too shallow, too shallow. Stop, what are you doing? You're too deep, you're too deep. You broke it. I broke it. You broke it, okay, well. I guess we get to go home for the rest of the day. This is interesting in here. You really feel like you're in a mine, minus, you know, the dust in the air. What do we got? Carrie, Carrie got a little excited. You gotta flip the switches. There's another one right there. What are you gonna do here? I gotta drop the dynamite in the hole. Okay, you got a couple of dynamite sticks. One, two. So proud of herself. All right, we're gonna learn about being a Batman. So we're gonna check the ceilings, make sure that they're safe. So she's gotta poke the ceiling with the stick. Oh, be careful, honey. Oh. It's dangerous work. My bad. What, what did the sign say? It said they average 10 hours a day for two dollars a day. Wow, two bucks a day. Yeah, that's what I mean. Back in, back in. Back in 1910.
I got two more exhibits we're going to go check out. Uh, there's a weather one and Minnesota's Greatest Generation is the next one up. Walking into Minnesota's Greatest Generation, the Depression, the War, and the Boom. Uh, first up is a movie theater. And uh, in here it looks like we can learn a little bit about uh, kids and movies. Oh wow. The movie theater is really cool. You really feel like you're in the balcony uh, looking down into the theater screen. Uh, over here it looks like you got some uh, toys and things from the uh, uh, 1940s era. Uh, bicycle, there's like Betty Boop, there's like a little train toy and a little airplane, and an old school style soda jerk. Um, oh, ice cream sounds good right about now. Here's some of the uniforms uh, that they would have worn around uh, World War II. Uh, speaking of which, here's a uh, U.S. Army tank. I'm sorry, please forgive me, this is a light armored car. This area they talk about uh, how uh, working together during World War II, so like uh, how women would take over um, in uh, you know, uh, manufacturing because uh, uh, the men were off uh, fighting the war. This is a part of the plane, you can go in here and you can watch a film. All right, now we're heading into post-World War II in the 50s. And over here is how television changed. Some people might recognize this. This is Vern Gagne, who was the owner of AWA, who was world heavyweight champion. And this was his championship belt. Things have changed like businesses, uh, dry cleaners, bowling alleys, and in the household things changed at home with automation and uh, refrigerators, dishwashers. There is talking about how transportation changed in the 50s. For example, this uh, Ford here, this cruiser, and then uh, of course airlines, Northwest being based up here in Minnesota, which is now part of Delta, I believe. Over here, uh, this area is talking about famous Minnesotans, but not really the ones that you might recognize, like Prince or Kirby Puckett kind of thing. Uh, musicians and inventors who might not be household names but you might recognize uh, after you read about them. The last place we're going into is weather permitting, talking about weather in Minnesota. You really can't talk about Minnesota without talking about weather, uh, particularly winter. <laughs> so here's some of the fashions throughout the year. Uh, basically I'm, you know, uh, uh, long underwear or coats furs and blankets just trying to do things so that you can enjoy the outdoors like sledding this is beautiful what is this one this is a replica of the 1986 ice palace that was at lake phelan i remember actually going to go see this when i was a little girl oh really it is very cool those ice palaces they used to have were amazing i'm kind of sad we don't do them anymore of course, uh, Minnesota has some great summer activities. Uh, in fact, um, this is supposed to be the father of water skiing. They claim that water skiing was invented at Lake Pepin in um, kind of southern Minnesota. It's a twister, so we are not uncommon to have some severe weather in Minnesota, including tornadoes, or I should say, especially tornadoes. What's in this room? It's a video. About? Tornadoes. And surviving one. So it's from first-hand mm -hmm. accounts of people who survived a, a tornado. Um, just amazing damage that these things leave behind. Walking out of the uh, Minnesota Historical Society History Center. And uh, what do you think, hon? We had a good time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've been here for about three hours mm -hmm. and got our learning on. We, I mean, we could have stayed more. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of reading, a lot of exhibits, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we were here about three hours, about an hour and a half of that was at the Sherlock Holmes exhibit, which is a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, definitely watch our separate video if you haven't already. Yeah, and um, this is very interesting because they have a lot of stuff that isn't on display and they rotate on occasion i've actually been here before kind of behind the scenes and they have all this stuff that you can actually request to go see yourself like uh i saw prince's outfit for purple rain and all these uh items that uh, like minnesotans are uh, have invented over the years like uh um 
you know, like there's all these Minnesota ties that are all inside this building that you can go check out. Some of them they have to request, but it's still fascinating. I mean, a lot of fun stuff here. Mm -hmm. What are the details for uh, for coming here? Uh, admission is $12 for adults. Um, that does also include like when they do have traveling exhibits like Sherlock Holmes that is included in the admission. Mm -hmm. um, it was $6 for parking. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of about it. There's obviously a price for kids, but I'm, I'm horrible and I never pay attention to that, so sorry. <laughs> we don't have to think about it, so yeah. it's out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Uh, but we want to thank you for joining us. Please do us a favor and subscribe. About uh, 80 to 90% of our viewers are not subscribers, so help us with that. Also help us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Um, you can do that by just hitting the icon in the corner. But we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Bill. I'm Carrie. You watch KB Treks. Again, do us a favor, like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Until then, good luck and have fun. See ya.